In this lecture, we are going to look at the topic of power billing, which is simply the process by which bills are calculated with the example of an industrial uh, case. So every bill comprises various charges that are added up to get the total uh, bill at the end of each month. First of all, we have the fixed charge. This is a charge that goes towards making the service available, including installation and maintenance of poles, power lines and equipment, as well as customer care. Uh, it is fixed because it is not related to the amount of power consumed. These services will be provided regardless of the quantity of uh, energy consumed. Second is the actual consumption charge. So this is measured in terms of the amount of energy that has been consumed. And the unit of that is the kilowatt hour. Uh, this money is used by the energy utility to purchase power from power generating companies and is charged directly, uh, it is paid directly to these power generation companies. Thirdly, we have a fuel cost charge. This takes care of uh, energy that is generated using uh, fuel and it takes care of also the fluctuations in fuel prices for oil uh, in uh, fossil fuel related power generation plants. So the quantity varies depending on how much or what ratio of the power consumed was generated through uh, fossil fuel related plants. Fourth, we have a forex adjustment, and this takes care of the foreign exchange component related to fluctuation of currencies like the dollar. Um, in terms of uh, things like project uh, repayment, so the loans that were taken in order to finance various power projects um, are repaid in foreign currency, so there is an adjustment. That takes that into account within the bill. Uh, fifth is inflation adjustment. This takes care of the variance from year to year of the, the cost of inflation uh, and factors that into the bill to take, into, to take it into account. Number six, we now have a series of levies after that. So we have first of all ERC. ERC is the Energy Regulatory Commission. There's a percentage for them. Number seven is REP. That is a levy uh, that goes towards the Rural Electrification Authority for implementation of rural electrification projects. Uh, eight, we have VAT. In Kenya, that is 16%. And nine, we have a WARMA levy. WARMA is the Water Resource Management Authority and it is levied to take into account hydroelectric power generation. Uh, so that because this is a renewable resource, Warma is the authority that is in charge. So they do have a levy that is charged within the field. <coughs> so let's have a look at uh, the components of a power bill. So this is a sample power bill taken sometime last year. Uh, and this will allow us to look at what goes into the actual billing uh, that is done by Kenya Power. So on the left hand side, you have uh, some components of the bill which list the consumption that has actually taken place by the consumer. So you will see this is the meter number uh, which the consumer has. This is attached to the consumer's premises and it has two sets of readings. So they will measure the previous reading and they will measure this month's reading. And the difference between those two will form the energy consumption. Those are the two there. We have a possible high rate and low rate, which are uh, billable depending on the quantity consumed. So this is the number of kilowatt hours that have been consumed within this time period. Usually the billing period is one month. So the previous reading at the end of the previous month is that. And 
the current reading at the end of this month is that the difference is indicated there. And this is measured in kilowatt hours. So these two here are kilowatt hours. The upper um, quantities are demands in kVA and in kilowatts. So kilowatts is actual real power and kVA is real, is the apparent uh, power. There are charges for each of those. These are not on the basis of previous reading and current reading. They are taken as the maximum. So during the course of the month, the meter will take readings periodically and the reading that is highest over the period of the whole month is what is taken uh, uh, to be charged. So now once we know this is the actual power consumed, uh, another interesting element is what you see here, which is the uh, method of charge or the tariff that is being used. So in this particular case, it is CI1 or C13, which is CI1, commercial or industrial method. And in this method, we have um, charges for maximum KVA demand, kilowatts charged, as well as the energy consumed, which we will now list going through. So let's look at the bill. Now, we'll notice that the first portion takes a, into consideration the amount of energy consumed, which we have listed there. So the high rate and low rate consumptions uh, are both listed. High rate would be, for example, daytime during peak times and low rate would be uh, at the charge at uh, off peak time, such as night time, there is less consumption. Now, in some cases, these would have different uh, values so that you would be able to take advantage if the utility wants to encourage consumers to consume on off-peak times, you would have different rates. But as it stands in the case of this bill, the rate is fixed. So you have 14,000 units consumed and they are charged at 12 shillings per unit. 9,500 off-peak charged at 12 shillings per unit. Uh, this is charged individually. Uh, so the rate 12 shillings per kilowatt hour, uh, that is the total for high rate low rate it is the same then you have an element of maximum demand kva charge so based on the maximum demand which we saw here the maximum for that particular month that they reached was 78 kva so at that particular instant during the month they had reached 78 kva and the charge for that is 800 shillings per unit and it gives a total of 62000 in this case and you have the fuel energy cost, which we mentioned. This is attributable to um, fuel, fossil fuel uh, generated power. So there's a charge of two shillings and 50 cents for the total energy consumed. Note that the total of this is 23,940, 14,000 plus 950. We will see this recurring as we go along. So, there's a charge for every kilowatt hour consumed for fuel energy. So in total, the fuel energy cost by itself is 409,530. But you will note that the actual bill came to 496. So a significant portion of the bill is non-energy uh, related uh, charges. So next we have the various levies and adjustments. You have Forex, Inflation, ERC, and REP. Note that REP is charged with an interesting uh, factor. It takes into consideration the total cost of energy by itself. So 173 plus 114 gives us 287,000. It's charged at 5 shillings per uh, unit that is given there, right? That is five cents. And finally, you have a rounding adjustment as well as VAT being added, which gives you the total amount of uh, 
bill payable. So that gives us now the tariff that has been indicated and the means by which power is billed. Um, this is the case across the board, whether it is commercial or industrial or domestic. The only difference will be the uh, tariffs that you would uh, encounter. So in a domestic case, you will not have maximum demand KBA, for example. Uh, that one is, uh, the domestic customers are excused from that. In addition to that, the ratio between the KBA and the KW, uh, kilowatts and kilowatt amperes, are sometimes used to determine the power factor. If the ratio between the kilowatts and the KVA uh, is below a certain uh, amount, there will be a charge for power factor. There will be a penalty for that. In this particular case, there is none, but there is uh, a possibility of that if power factor correction is not taken into consideration.